Hello and welcome to DevAbout. My name is Darren and in this session we'll be covering an introduction into Selenium WebDriver. We'll be writing two examples in MS Test and we'll round up with a bit of refactoring. In these examples we will be testing the search feature of Wikipedia. In the first test we will verify that the correct behavior happens when we search for a page that exists and then we will write a test to check the behavior when we are searching for a page that does not exist. WebDriver is a great tool for writing these kinds of tests. WebDriver uses the native support for automation in each browser. It does this through the use of driver libraries. These can be downloaded from the Selenium HQ website. You don't need to download a driver for Firefox, as Firefox comes with the driver installed by default. To keep things simple, we'll be using Firefox in our examples. I'll begin by opening Visual Studio and creating a new unit test project. I'm going to change the class name to Wikipedia Search Test, and I'm also going to change the name of the first method, hopefully to a decent unit test name. I'm loosely following the conventions as put forward by Roy Osharov on his blog. I need a reference to the Selenium libraries, and I'm going to add this through NuGet. I'm going to install both the Selenium WebDriver package as well as the support classes for Selenium. I'm declaring a new variable called driver, which is of type iWebDriver, and that's an interface, so you need to instantiate an actual implementation, and in our case we are using the Firefox driver. If you wanted to test different browsers, you would use the relevant drivers here. I'm busy setting the implicit weight. From this point on, when the driver is looking for an element that it can't find, it will continue trying to find that element until it either finds the element or the timeout has been reached, in which case an exception will be thrown. There is an alternative to the implicit weight, and that is using an explicit weight. The syntax for an explicit weight can be a bit unnerving for a newcomer, so I will leave that for a future post. Now we're going to use the driver object to navigate to the Wikipedia main page, and we do that by calling driver.navigate.gotoURL, passing in the Wikipedia main page as a string argument. Once we've landed on Wikipedia's main page, we need a way to enter text into the search text box. And to do that, we need some way of finding that text box. And in order to do that, we can right click and inspect element. And then we can look at the HTML to see what's the best way to find this element. And what we're looking for is an ID or a class name or a tag name. And as we can see here, there is a ID that we can use. Let's step back into the C sharp code and we can use this ID to find the element and enter text into it. We'll use driver.findElement and by ID, passing in the ID which we grabbed from the browser. And this enables us to get a handle on an iWebElement object, which we will call searchInput. This object, we can now use a method keys to pass through the text that we would like to be entered. And in our case, it's Christian Barnard. Let's run the test to see how far we are. And as we can see, Christian Barnard has been entered into the text field. The next thing to do is actually to perform the search. And to kick that off, we either need to click the little search icon or we can press the Enter key. And that's the approach I'm going to take. To do this, we simply use our search input reference again and we call .send keys and then we use keys.enter. And let's run the test to see if that actually performs the search as we expect. And there we go. We can see we are now on the Christian Barnard page. Now we need a way for the test to verify that we have actually landed on the correct page. So let's inspect this element here. And we can see there's another ID called first heading. And we can use that ID in our C-sharp code to grab that element. So we use find element again and by ID. This gives us a reference to the 
to the element we need and to grab the text we can simply use dot text and we can uh, assign that to a string variable called we'll, we'll be consistent and call it first heading and now what we can actually do is set up an assert where we check that the string we've gotten from that element matches what we expect so in our case the expected is Christian Barnard and we use the variable first heading to check that it is correct and then we need a way of actually closing the browser and there are two methods one is close which will close the window and if it's the last window that's open the browser will close and then there's dot quit which will close all windows and the browser and I'm going to choose quit for these examples let's run the test and there's the green tick so it's a passing test next up we'll write a test to verify that the correct behavior happens when we are searching for a page that does not exist in order to do this I will simply copy the test we already have and I will give it a new name to indicate we are now verifying what happens when there are no results so I will call it finds no result show no result message and I'm going to change the text we are passing through to the search text box instead of Christian Barnard we can use ABC XYZ and let's have a look at how Wikipedia behaves when we are searching for a page that does not exist and search so we end up on a page which which has search results in the header however and there is a line which says the page ABC XYZ does not exist and we can use that in our test to verify that we have landed on a page that has no results which is what we expect so let's inspect this element to see how we can locate it unfortunately there is no ID however it does fall within a class that we can use and the class name is MW search create link so let's copy that and we can use that in the code so instead of saying by ID we can change that to a different locator strategy which is by class name I'm also going to change this variable on the left just to be more consistent with the element we're dealing with so I'm calling it create link message now we don't need to use the entire text which we find in this element we can simply use the first part which is the page ABC XYZ does not exist for our purposes that should be enough so I'm going to change the way we are doing this a certain use is true and then this create link message which represents the whole which represents the full text of that element I'm simply going to check that that contains the string which we are interested in which is the page ABC XYZ does not exist I also need to just use the escape character to mark these quotes as string literals so that they don't terminate the string early and let's run this test to see what we've got and there we have it we have a passing test I'm also going to run both tests together just to make sure that they are idempotent and that they don't interfere with each other and it seems like both are passing fine now that both tests are passing we can look into ways of improving our code the main problem we have at the moment is code duplication we can use MS test to remove some of this code duplication we can create a test initialize method which is just a normal method with the test initialize attribute on it and MS test will run this method once before each test now we can move these three lines which in effect set up the driver we can move those lines into the test init method we can make the driver variable a class member variable which means the scope is class wide and it can be used in both of our test methods which means we only need these three lines in the test init and we can remove them from both test methods we can also create a test cleanup 
and this gets run once after each test is run. And we can put the driver.quit here and we don't need it in any of our tests. So it's after each test is run, MS test will run driver.quit. I like to use the underscore in my member variables. So I will just use resharper to help refactor the name of this variable. Let's run the test to make sure that nothing is broken. The first one passes. And the second one is also passed. So it's all good so far. We still have duplication in our code. And I'm going to introduce a method to help remove this duplication. So let's use resharper and we can extract these three lines into a method of its own. I'm looking at this method that resharper is about to generate and it's not quite what I want. It has Christian Barnard hard-coded in there. I would prefer a variable that we could pass into this method and this method would then use that variable to perform a search on it. That would just make it a bit more flexible for our purposes. So I'm just going to back out of this and just uh, cancel. And before generating the method, what I'll do is just extract this to a local variable. I'm going to call it search term. It's going to be a constant string. And I'm going to just move it up one line. And now what we can do is extract a method again. And as you can see, the method that's going to be generated is a lot better. It's got the search term variable coming in as a parameter and it's used in search input dot send keys. So we can reuse this method in different contexts now. And I'm going to, I'm going to name this search for. And that looks pretty good. You can see the search for method on line 36. Now that we've introduced this search for element in our test method, we I feel the driver.find element is not at the same level of abstraction. So I'm going to extract that to a method of its own. Let's just take this bit and use extract method. Uh, I'm going to keep it as a method. No particular reason, I just feel that a method is better in this case than a property. So there we have it, get first heading. And I'm going to inline this variable. We don't need the temporary variable. We can simply call get first heading and then we don't need a, a temporary variable. I'm going to move these helper methods underneath the second test. And we can actually use search for to replace these first three lines in this test. I'm just copying this ABC XYZ. So here we go, search for, and I pass through the ABC XYZ. And again, I feel this driver find element is not at the same level of abstraction as the search for method, so I'm going to extract that into its own method as well. And extract method. Again, we'll keep it a method, not a property. And I'll call it get create link message. Okay, and in a similar fashion, I'm going to inline this variable. So we can use the method instead of a temporary variable. And there's a bit of duplication here with the ABC XYZ. So I'm just going to take that and put it into a variable. So we can only, we only hard code that the ABC XYZ once. And I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to change this to a capital A. We aren't really testing for case sensitivity, so it's, it's not too much of a problem. Now I can use the search term variable in the string, so we don't need it twice. Just to prevent this line from becoming longer than it needs to be, I'm going to introduce this expected variable, and I will do a bit of string concatenation just before we get into the assert true. 
so string.concat and here I will put in the variable. It's a bit tricky with these escaped quotes, but I think it will be fine. I'll use the variable now. And I think I'll pop a semicolon at the end of this and then it should compile just fine. Okay. And it looks pretty good to me. Let's run all the tests and see what we get. The first test is good. And we have a passing. Now the second test has passed. Um, having these two search term variables where they are is kind of bugging me. I think it would be a lot better if they were class member variables. So I'm going to use resharper and introduce a field which is going to be a constant and I'm going to call it existing page. So hopefully the semantics of this variable is clear. And I'm going to do a similar thing for the search term that's in the second method. I will again introduce a field and I will call it non-existing page. I think the code looks fairly good. Perhaps this line here where we create the expected variable, that could be in its own method. And of course going forward we might want to start sifting these methods off into page objects. But that'll be a, that'll be a topic for another screencast. I think that wraps things up for us now. We've had a good look at the Selenium WebDriver API. At least we've seen we've seen the fundamentals of it, and I'm sure you can get the gist of how it's used. We've also seen some features of MS Test, and we did a bit of refactoring. If there's any specific topic you would like me to cover, please leave a suggestion in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.